What's good, Valley Point? Uh, it's been a great week because I got to see some of you guys twice this week with our night of worship. That was last Tuesday night. And then Friday night was our movie night. So we got great times ahead, too. Uh, don't forget, we're in a live chat right now. So give a shout out to your friends, to the leaders. But I got a question for you. How many of you have heard the phrase, bigger picture? For those that have, did you actually think about what it means? Usually people say the phrase bigger picture when there's more to the story than we actually see. And sometimes in our lives, it can be hard to see the bigger picture. I can speak from experience because I was so selfish during my whole childhood, the thought of a bigger picture never crossed my mind. I'm going to show you guys a video where it shows social media compared to reality. Anyone willing to admit that you may have embellished a social media post? But maybe you follow a celebrity or an influencer or a YouTuber, even just someone really popular at your school. From the pictures that pop up in their feed, you'd think their life is absolutely perfect. Their hair always looks amazing. They have a ton of friends. They have or make a lot of money. And things couldn't be any better, right? Here's another example of social media versus reality picture of Justin Bieber. Just check out the difference in this photo. Well, I think maybe if you saw the bigger picture, if you saw what was really going on behind the scenes in their life, you'd realize just how far from perfect things really are. A lot of celebrities actually struggle with depression, loneliness, addictions, people constantly using them and even dealing with bad public breakups. I mean, the news media is broadcasting your problems, everything to see. When I was in school, I had absolutely gorgeous friend who had the nicest clothes, the most expensive jewelry, a huge weekly allowance, and even got an expensive car for a sweet 16. I don't care who you were back then, you were jealous. And if you saw her on social media, you would, you would either want to be her or wanted to be with her. And little did you know, she would have traded all the money, all the stuff she had, just to spend more time with her dad. She told me all the money, the gifts, they replaced her father because he had to work all the time. Of course, none of her Insta stories showed her depression and family drama. Social media posts show only a small part of people's world. But there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, isn't there? When it, comes to, when it comes to so many things in our own lives, we have the tendency to, tendency to focus only on one small part, and that's what's happening to us. We don't always pay attention to what's going on behind the scenes. We tend to just look at one circumstance or one event or one detail and think about the way it's impacting us right now. But when we do that, we miss out on everything else that's happening around us. There's so much more than we may not see. We're missing the bigger picture. Now, I think this happens in a lot of areas in our lives, but the one we're going to talk about today is our families. And I know all our families may be different from each other, but I think no matter what, we can all agree on this. When it comes to our families, we tend to think we're the main character in the story. Whether we realize it or not, I think a lot of us expect that, at least in our own families. The world should revolve around us. While we might not do it intentionally, our actions say, hey, I'm the one that should get all the attention. I have straight A's. Doesn't anyone care? 
why don't our parent why do our parents skip my game and go to my little sister's dance class does anyone care i'm upset think about it we'd rather have everyone else on our schedule staying up late and sleeping in We'd love it if family meals could have only things we like to eat, meaning fewer vegetables and more Cheetos. We don't think twice when asking our parents to spend money on things like Fortnite, sneakers, clothes, concert tickets, or even a new phone, because those are the things we want. Basically, without even realizing it, our actions say to our families that we want them to focus first on how we feel, what we need, and what they can do to make us feel feel and look better. Now, maybe in your family, things are a little different. Maybe all the attention is actually focused on you. Your parents are all up in your business. They want to know every detail of your life, who you're hanging out with, when you're leaving their house, your cell phone is, location is constantly being tracked, your grades are the most important, your activities are the biggest deal, and your feelings are the top priority of conversation. It's all about what you're doing and how you're feeling and what you're thinking. And honestly, that's a little too much. Your family is driving you crazy with all the questions, conversations, and attention. And listen, I get it. That does sound like a lot, but can I just point out one thing? In this case, you too are looking at what's happening in your family in a way that's all about you. You're noticing only how all the attention is impacting you. You're not necessarily thinking about your parents' intentions. And I know personally when my parents told me I couldn't go somewhere or spend a weekend at a friend's house, I literally thought they were just trying to ruin my life. You see, whether we're the center of attention or we want all the attention in our families, we're not seeing the bigger picture. We're not seeing that there may be a lot more happening in our homes. Things we don't know about or understand yet that's causing our parents or siblings to treat us the way they do. Or we're not seeing the bigger picture of our, all our own actions. That's the way we view ourselves and treat our families has an impact on them too. And here's the deal. Missing that bigger picture can cause a lot of frustration and hurt within our families. These types of tricky family dynamics have been around as long as there's been families. In fact, some of the greatest stories in the Bible are about this very topic. And trust me, these family stories are a lot crazier than any of us can even imagine. Today, we're going to look at one guy in the Bible who found himself in the middle of a pretty crazy family. His name was Joseph, and he was actually a big deal in the Old Testament. He was a hero. And the Old Testament was a collection of books in the Bible written before Jesus came to earth. Jesus was the youngest son of 12 siblings from a man named Jacob. So I, I can't imagine having 10 siblings. So we're talking a pretty big family. But one thing that's true about all families, both back then and now, is that relationships in them can be tricky. So that being said, let's take a look at what made some of the relationships in Joseph's family so tricky. We're going to read Genesis 37, 3 and 4. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. So basically, Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other children. And they did nothing to hide it. Jacob could have just said, hey, other sons, I just want to let you know that Joseph over here, he's the best. He's my favorite. And I don't know about you, but if I were one of Joseph's brothers, I would be super jealous and very angry. It's like Jacob gave Joseph the nicest, most expensive headphones and that pretty much that money could buy, and the brothers got nothing. Can you see how this might create some family tension? Well, what happened next only made matters worse. Take a look. Let's read Genesis chapter 37, 5 through 7. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying bundles of grade. Suddenly, my bundle stood up. 
and your bundles all gathered around me and bowed low before mine. If that sounds a little weird to you, it's probably because it is. Basically, Joseph had a dream where he and his brothers were working in a field together, and suddenly the bundle of grain that Joseph was trying to ro- rise up and stand above the others. And the other bundles of grain, his brothers, were tr- were, that they were tying, were bowing down to him. Joseph's bundle of grain. It's crazy that they were all bowing down to him in the dream. It was a symbol implying that one day Joseph's brothers would bow down to him. Now here's the thing. If one of our siblings came to us with a crazy dream, we'd probably just roll our eyes and move on. It's just a dream after all, but in this culture, dreams were a much bigger deal. They were actually believed to be predictions of the future. So when Joseph shared his dream about his brothers actually bowing down to him, they believed it was really going to happen. And as the passage tells us, hearing that made Joseph's brothers hate him all the more, as if that were even possible at this point. What's worse, in the next few verses, Joseph went on to share another dream he had. And this time, there were stars, a moon, and a sun, and they bowed down to worship him. As you can probably guess, his brothers got a little bit more irritated. And after hearing about his second dream, they were really frustrated. But what the dreams and all his family drama have to do with us, I think we can learn from this story this. When we can't see the bigger picture, we should remember the impact we have on our own families. Now, Scripture doesn't tell us what everyone in Joseph's family was thinking or feeling, but we can guess a lot based on their actions. It seems like everyone, Joseph, his brothers, and even his dad, didn't notice how their actions affected each other. You could say they were missing some major self-awareness, and they definitely didn't see the bigger picture. All that combined caused a lot of conflict. Think about it. Jacob loved his son Joseph so much that he treated him differently than the rest of his brothers. Jacob didn't see the bigger picture that he was causing a lot of tension and conflict between his sons. And Joseph's brothers, well, they weren't aware that the, how strong and harsh responses Joseph impacted them. Even though they were reacting that hurt caused by their dad, was favoritism of Joseph. That didn't mean they didn't know how Joseph negatively affected them. Even Joseph struggled in self-awareness. One thing I love about these Bible heroes like Joseph, he wasn't perfect. He made mistakes, which kind of gives me hope. He knew his brothers were jealous of the way their father loved and favored him. But still, Joseph came to them with not one, but two dreams about how great he would be one day. He didn't see the bigger picture of how sharing those things might hurt his brothers even more. Everybody in the story was missing the bigger picture. They weren't paying attention to how they were negatively affecting their own family members, which is sad. And honestly, I think that's true for a lot of family tension and stress we experience. Typically, no one is trying to be self-centered. We're simply trying to make sure that our needs are getting met. We're trying to make sure things go the way we want them to go. We're not trying to hurt anybody else. We're honestly not thinking about anybody else at all. But that's the problem because when we only think about ourselves, we miss the bigger picture. We miss the way our actions impact others. Now, maybe you feel like everyone else in your family isn't paying attention to how their actions impact you. Maybe your mom lied about something, or your dad left, or one of your siblings has hurt you repeatedly and without consequence. To you, I'd say this. There's more to those stories, too. The people who hurt you or your family, they usually do that because somebody else hurt them. They're reacting out of their own pain. Does that make what they did okay? Absolutely not. And I really encourage you to talk to someone you trust if you're being mistreated or harmed in some way. But it can, it can help us see the bigger picture when it comes to the way we feel about them. Here's an example of one of my missions as an extrovert is making cashier smile when I go to the store. But one day there was just this nasty lady. She was rude and after multiple smile attempts, I realized her mom just got diagnosed with cancer. 
So there was totally a bigger picture here. Now, instead of going home offended, I went home praying. Here's the point. When you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. So many of us are hyper aware of the way our families affect us, but we're rarely aware of how we affect them. I'm not going to lie. This hit me hard. I don't even know if it ever crossed my mind in middle or high school. That's what happened with Joseph's story. And look how it turned out. Not great. Everybody was upset. And as we'll see in weeks later, things got worse before they got better. So instead of letting this be the story of their own family, of your own family, we can flip the way we see things happening. We can work on becoming more aware of how our words, actions, and behaviors impact our families. When you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. So here's the application. So what does this actually look like? How do we start seeing the bigger picture when it comes to how our actions impact our families? First, we got to be aware. I think we have to work on developing an accurate view of ourselves. We have to be aware of how our actions impact others. Start by asking yourself, how is the way I'm acting affecting my family? Maybe it's just having a bad attitude. How can I put my family first? Maybe that's just going along with family members when they choose something to do. What do I need to give up or put aside to serve my family? Maybe your parents ask you to do something, but you're always on your phone or playing a video game and you're not willing to help right now. How can I show love to my family? Well, you can encourage them. What can I do to put my family's needs before my own? Another simple way is to ask. Listen, paying attention to how our actions affect others is hard. It's not natural. It's not always easy for us to see the way we're impacting others. If you aren't sure, ask someone close to you to be honest for help. A connection group leader, maybe a parent, a sibling, go to someone who knows you. And not just knows you, but knows you well and willing to speak truth and love. Ask them to help you see something in yourself that maybe you can't even see on your own. And two, take a step. Take one step to change that thing in yourself so you can be more aware of the way it impacts others. Then choose to do a different response. Maybe you always speak harshly to your younger sibling, so you need to practice recognizing and correcting that tone. If your parents are constantly saying that you're giving them attitude when you don't think you are, there might be some truth to what they're saying. Maybe you leave your clothes or dishes or school stuff around the house for your parents to clean up. So you need to practice better awareness to pick up after yourself. In your mind, it might not be a big deal, but it might drive your parents nuts. And this could potentially change the course of their day and night. Or maybe you need to control your temper instead of blowing up at your family when you're tired, which I've done, or frustrated or mad. Here's a good example to learn to apologize. This will be a great practice for marriage. If you can get this down now as students, you guys will be set for later. Whatever it is, pause and think about how you're affecting others. Look at how you're impacting the bigger picture and make a move to change it for the better. Remember, you can't see the bigger picture. Remember the impact you have on your own family. All right, guys, I want to pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for giving us just examples that we can follow and showing us real life examples that we can relate to in the Bible. I pray that we all can see the bigger picture in our, in our families and our friends and people we don't know, in our sports teams, our relationships, whatever it may be. Open our eyes, Lord, and burden our hearts to, to do what's right in your eyes to actually make changes to impact our family for the better. I pray for the rest of the time now as we go to our connection groups, Lord, to bless it and be glorifying to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So don't forget, guys, we got the link over here on the left to our Zoom uh, gathering. So please pop on over to there. We're looking forward to playing a game and break out into our groups. Much love for you.